changes from the side we saw against PSG in the Champions League. No Xavi uh, either in this one as he was serving a suspension. What does it mean for league play? Well, at least it's not 11 points for Barcelona. Looking up at Real Madrid, uh, just eight points a week away from El Clasico where these two teams will square off. For more on this one, let's welcome into the show our good friend and colleague Luis Garcia. Luis, uh, what'd you make of the performance from Barcelona, especially given all the changes that we saw from Xavi? Was well, a, a, a little bit of uh, the kind of the three games that we've been watching uh, for the three teams uh, uh, that they are involved in the Champions League. It was all about trying to get a good result, try to rest the players who are going to be involved in the midweek game, uh, trying to give some minutes to those players who are no more. Uh, played often. Today we saw Pedri getting minutes, we saw Fermin getting minutes, we saw Victor Roque getting minutes, Joao Felix once again being important. Let's don't forget that Joao Felix, yeah, it's true that uh, kind of frustrates us a little bit because of his inconsistency, but every single time that he's got a good day, he's uh, definitive. Today, again, giving three points, let's don't forget, gave three points also against uh, Real Madrid, against Barcelona. There's been a few games where in the moment that he's he had the chance of scoring. He's been a very important key player for Barcelona. So Xavi needs all, all, for, from all these players uh, for the rest of the season. So it was about uh, taking out of the way. And now Barcelona can focus on the massive game that they're going to have uh, in midweek against Paris Saint-Germain. Now, most people love a bicycle kick. Yeah, I love one. I just can't do it. <laughs> Couldn't do it then. Can't well, do it. Do it. What yes. was your problem with Joao <laughs> Felix's goal then? Well, I don't... It's not a problem with Joao Felix's goal. These we'll call it skills, to be attempted, which was a great one this time by a very technical player, we're still allowing these to happen when defenders are expected to put their head in and it's not seen as a free kick. Now, I hear it, Barcelona fans shouting at the TV, it's nothing against Barcelona, it's a generalisation. I've always felt that if there's nobody around and you're trying an overhead kick, that's fine. But if you're scoring a goal from six yards out or thereabouts and a couple of defenders are going to put their head in, What's the argument here? The defender should put his head in, and if he gets a boot straight in the eye or straight in the nose, it's a free kick? I mean, who, who, who in their right mind is going, is going to in do In this that? day and age, yeah, it's it not might be the odd one. So I, I've, I've always had a little problem with that. I'm not taking away from the skill, but look, it's either a high boot or it's not a high boot, and I don't understand why it, it, it is called a free kick anywhere else in the field, apart from when an attacking player is attempting it in a box. It's called great skill. Go oh, I'm a miserable sod, isn't I? Mm -hmm. Sometimes. You, you, well, you do sound a little grumpy. You do sound a little no, grumpy. It's what it is with, with stuff like that. And I don't understand why the law is applied differently mm -hmm. in the penalty area rather than somewhere else on the field. Luis, what's your perspective on this? Do you think the goal from Joao Felix maybe should have been disallowed? Dear Pelé, dear Maradona, please don't uh, hear what Kerry is saying. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, I understand what Kerry is mentioning, but uh, I hope that Noah can hear what he's talking. And, but I think it's a, a piece of skill not for everyone. Just a, bit, a few bits of, of player can manage to score a goal like this one. So I enjoy very much. It's a top goal. And hopefully there is no many more for, uh, false or, or disallowed goals from these kind of skills. There you have it. Uh, Barcelona, one nothing winners over Cadiz. What about what's next for Barcelona? Of course, the uh, Champions League second leg against PSG. Barcelona with a 3-2 lead after the first leg as we take a look at the odds here. Uh, Luis, I guess Barcelona's got to feel pretty good about this game now. Certainly uh, after the fact that they were able to get the points today and rest all those players ahead of the second leg. Yeah, exactly. It was about uh, giving some rest, uh, giving some minutes to the, the players not involved and to keep the momentum. I think the Barcelona is in a fantastic moment, going with one goal ahead to Paris Saint-Germain, makes them open up, try to go to, to get the equalizer at the Stadium of Barcelona. And of course, uh, uh, that kind of gives you the, the dominance of the game. I expect Barcelona to do well. They look very, uh, more solid at the back with the, the, the incorporation of uh, Kubasi next to Araujo. The, uh, Caraujo hasn't even played a minute uh, today, so that shows what is the commitment of this Barcelona for the, the game against Paris Saint-Germain. And let's see, of course, uh, it's a tough, tough game. Uh, we all know that if uh, 
Mbappe is got the day, it's going to be very difficult to stop him. Dembele is another very important player. So you need to have an eye on those players. But if Barcelona can tie them up the way that they did it uh, last, week, last week, I think that they got a big, big chance to be in the semifinals. And uh, as uh, Greg was mentioning, if we were talking about Barcelona being in the semifinal two, three months ago, Probably they will have, uh, we will have thought that we, we were crazy. So a great opportunity to kind of clear and make of this madness of season a very good one if this Barcelona side arrive to the semifinals. Barcelona obviously in the driver's seat here heading to the second leg. What's their biggest worry? Uh, the, they don't deal with Mbappe. And they did in the first leg? Yeah, but he never turned up. Yeah, there was a, so you, could, you can look at it both ways. They, dealt, they did a good job on him and he didn't do enough to try and extricate himself from, from what they were trying to do and what they did do. And look, what's the weakest, what was the weakest point of the Barcelona side defensively uh, and has been for a while? It's been the, it was the left-hand side. Mm. It was Joao Cancelo. Why would he not... Why would, when he's having a quiet game, Kylian Mbappe, not trot over to the right-hand side because Barcola played there in the second half and did OK? Why would he not trot over there? Because you got a one-on-one, -on -one, him and Kinsella, he'd rip him to shreds. He can't do, Kinsella's a fantastic footballer, but he can't defend. Mm. He's not a good defender. And so they have to find a way, PSG, to get this guy in the game. Now, I don't know where his head's at, you know, what, you know whether he's annoyed and whether he's upset with every his teammates, doesn't think they're good enough, he's going to Real Madrid, blah, blah, blah. Probably mad at the manager for not playing him. <clears throat> he's, he's, well, right, that's another story. That's a big concern for, for Barcelona. Mm -hmm. if, they get the, if they get it right, but the basics right, defend well uh, and get the same kind of supply chain to Lewandowski and Rafinha has another great night and Laminia Mal plays with and all that sort of stuff, <clears throat> they're the favourites to go through. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very, very close, but they're the favourites to go through. So they're in a very good position as we speak, but they've got to make sure they keep Mbappe quiet for a second game in a row, which is not going to be easy. Uh, since you mentioned Lewandowski, and we <coughs> have seen in the game today suspended, Luis, I wonder what you think of Lewandowski. Two goals in his last seven across all comps. Is that a worry, his form leading into this game against PSG? If he played the same way that he played uh, against PSG, I'm not worried at all because he provides so many good things for Barcelona. We are talking about when Barcelona has been struggling uh, on the build-up when he's been under pressure and Lewandowski was the, the, the way out. Bringing those long balls, passing that first line of pressure and arriving to Lewandowski, if he can hold the ball the way he did it against Paris Saint-Germain, turning around, uh, providing assists to, to the players, I'm not worried about because it's very important to have a, a, a striker who can hold the ball, who can lay off, who can move and be a worry for the two centre-backs because you got two wide players who can be decisive, who can be players of 1v1 and, can, and they got speed enough uh, to beat those players. So um, goals will arrive. Mm. If he's at the right moment and if he's in the right spot at the right time, goals will arrive. But uh, I was very, very happy with, for the way that he performed. It doesn't matter if he is scoring or not. Of course, when Lewandowski is scoring, Barcelona is a better team. But what he pr gave to, back to, to the team uh, in the game against Paris Saint-Germain was one of the best performances that I've seen uh, from Lewandowski in the whole season.